morning. Good morning. morning. Please rise as you're able for the call to worship. The earth and all that is in it belongs to the Holy One. Look, here is our God for whom we have waited. This is the Holy One for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in our salvation. Who shall ascend the hill of the Holy One and who shall stand in this holy place? We come seeking the face of God. Amen. Our opening prayer, please join. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and end of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear that death and mourning will be no more. You make our home among us and abide with us as our God. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, living and doing your will. In the name of Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is for all the saints, and we're singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 6. First reading is uh, from the 24th Psalm. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Salah, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. 
Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Salah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God loves lo God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my blood, body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, proud for you and for many forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you keep it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is the Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on the earth, bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we shall name before you, and those we name silently in our hearts. O God of the living and of the dead, we praise your holy name for your servants who have finished their course in faith, especially these our brothers and sisters who have so recently crossed beyond our sight. We pray that encouraged by their example and strengthened by their fellowship, we may be partakers with them of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit makes us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. So, Sue and Diana, will you come over here? And today, um, we're not going to use the pre-packaged blood wafer and grape juice of your bread and wine. So, you both uh, be here? Yes. And could you take this basket, Diane, over there? Yeah. Could you take this one? And Howie, could you be here? So, um, so now I'll, I invite you to come forward and receive this bread. You just take a photo for two seconds, and then eat the bread, and then drink this blood, and then put it right there. All right? So, yes.
Would you pray with me the very last paragraph of the order? Eternal God, we give you thanks for the holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, let's the, pass the peace one another. Turn your Christian brothers and sisters and wave your hands. Hey, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah, this is fantastic experience for everyone. And then the lyric says, we all are family in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Sunday school, stand up. You may go to your classroom. And then you can, um, you may watch this video again on our YouTube channel anytime. After the service, I will upload this one. So you can check. And uh, I'm telling you that this is not the first and last uh, project. We we'll continue to uh, do make a, you know, this fun project. So if you would like to join, please let me know. Yes. Uh, what is this? Yes, second reading. That was great. <laughs> Our second reading is from the Revelation to Saint John, chapter twenty-one, verses one through six. 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Um, today we remember and in remembering say thanks to those whose gift has have made us who we are. But in a way, every church, every Sunday is All Saints Sunday, I would say. Whenever we sing a hymn, read from scripture, even pray or preach, we are doing so with the saints. We are dependent on those who have gone before us to give us the words, tell us the stories, and teach us the tunes whereby we praise God. Grow in our faith and co commitment and find ways that lead to God. Yes, every Sunday is All Saints Day. However, although we believe they are with us in spirit, we grieve, which is long and painful journey. Apostle Paul calls death the final enemy. And when that enemy touches your life, you grieve. Grief is normal. Grief is natural. And it is not just in the days afterward. Grief goes on. The way I figure it in a congregation on any given Sunday, easily 99.9% percent of you are in grief over someone. That is why we weep at funerals of near strangers. That's why we avoid funerals. Grief keeps coming back at odd times, grabbing us from behind and throwing us into deep sadness. Last year, I, I lost my grandma who was 104 years old. Everyone is, oh, praise the Lord. But no, at that moment, I was sad. I never, I could not praise our Lord. I knew that he, she is with God in heaven. Better place where there is no pain, no sorrow, but I, I, I grieve. However, Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, we grieve, yet we do not grieve as those who have no hope. So, hope of what? Here's what Christians hope. We hope that the same God raised Jesus from the dead shall raise us as well. Our hope is not unfounded, not just wishful thinking. Our hope for the future is based on what we know of Christ in the present. In Romans chapter 8, Paul says that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. If our experience with Christ has taught us just one thing, it is that our God longs to be with us. Will not, will do almost anything to be near us, will go to any lengths to have us. That's the gospel, that's the good news. That is a story that we recite and celebrate every Sunday here in the church. In the ancient Hebrew scriptures, the prophets, the, the law, the, the commandments, the Psalms, 
In, in Jesus' birth, life, teaching, death, and resurrection, God loves us. When Jesus was resurrected, what did they do? First thing after he was raised, what did they do? He came back to his disciples who had betrayed him. He showed up to them. He came back to his people, us. He comes to us. That, that is the basis of our hope. We are confident that the God who has gone to such extraordinary lengths to be close to us in life shall not seize those efforts in death. Therefore, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Our hope is that we will, by the work and will of God, be with, be with Jesus forever. That's our belief. Death. The final enemy has been defeated. So think of Sundays as dress rehearsal for eternal life. Think of our experiences of Sunday worship as our way of loving Jesus now so that we might love him forever and we praise God for all eternity. Jesus Christ tells us some followers in the Gospel of John, because I live, you shall live. You know the song, right? Because you live. Yeah, I love that song. And that's why we have hope. Encourage one another with these words. I would not be here today if it were not for all those saints who put up with me in Sunday school and told me the story of Jesus, who taught me in a college religion class, and guided me when I was confused, and put their arm around me when I want to give up. Today's lesson from Revelation, the last book of the Bible, speaks of new heaven and earth. It gives us comfort. It says, now, God's home is with people. He will live with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them. And he will be their God. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. Amen? Amen. Now they rest from their labors. Now they are in the presence of great shepherd who wipes away all tears and guides them to the waters of eternal life. I'm thinking of a multitude that I could not possibly name today. I expect that you are also thinking about the people who put you here today. The saints who nurtured you in this faith and to whom you owe your commitment to Christ. Today is the day we give thanks for these saints. Name them, claim them, give thanks to God that they were there for you. May God give us comfort, peace, and hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of life, we thank you Thank you for the gift of life, for the change of seasons, and the bounty of earth's goodness. We thank you. We thank you for life. Because we have so loved life, Lord, we also fear and hate death. Death robs us of those whom we love takes from us the joys of their presence and throw us into great, great grief. Lord, help us to follow you in life and in death, to have faith that you love, your love continues and continues to hold us even when death takes us, that you shall rescue those whom we love from the devast devastation of death. 
that you will raise us again to life. In the resurrection of Jesus, you defeated death, conquered over the powers of evil, and established your reign. Lord, I ask you, give us grace to believe in you and what you have done for us. Lord, Lord help us to comfort and to encourage one another with this hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now, before we honor our saints, it's time of a moment of remembrance. Margaret King will share a special poem today. She um, come up for it and then share for us. Um, she shared um, that at the parsonage. And we love that poem. So it's very appropriate for the All Saints Sunday. So Margaret will share for us. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was that dash between those years. For that dash represents all of the time she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? We often talk about church as a community in our individualized society it is sometimes hard to realize just how interrelated we are with other people and that and yet our lives are intertwined with the lives of others in ways that we are sometimes unaware whether we like to admit it or not we are social creatures we should know that we owe to other people especially in the church most of us have fathers and mothers in faith some of those are our own parents. Some are teachers, pastors, youth ministers, Sunday school teachers who are in small or large ways help us grow and nurture us in life and in the faith. So this is a time of recognizing and honoring those who have passed and before us. In honor of all the saints, our beloved relatives, friends, and neighbors who have departed in the past year, Shirley Christensen, Marilyn Goldsmith, Betty Lindquist, Frank Mazurkowitz, George Mitchell,
Gabby Petito. Estelle Sotheros. Reverend Ali Conkle. Irina Halstead. Marie Littlefair. Geraldine McCabe. Carol Nicholson. Christopher Saltalamachia. Salta Janet Warnkin. Anne DeLuca. Laura Hegner. Jane Mahinney. Travis McKevney, Paul Ostrander, Geraldine Sheridan, from Betty and Evan Denninger, Uncle Jim, nephew Tanner, and friend Scott. Let us have a moment of silence in honor and remember their legacy and their presence.
and sound a very emotional morning. <laughs> it's difficult to take over. Um, so uh, today I'm offering the uh, a very classic hymn, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. When I, when I took peace, I thought Miss Judy and her beautiful singing in many occasions. So hopefully you will like this arrangement as well.
Amen. Would you rise for a closing hymn? My family. Go now into God's world to be the spirit of hope, peace, and blessing for others, knowing that God is always, always be with you now and forever. Be blessed in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.